What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're gonna be talking about the huge update in Modern Warfare 2 that you probably weren't ready for. Definitely stay tuned. But before you jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and let me know down below in the comments. Have you joined the group yet over in Modern Warfare 2? This is a brand new feature that just came out with Season 1 Reloaded and you have the option of joining up to five different groups. They haven't yet added any feature that allows you to have a colored clan tag, which would be cool, similar to the clan feature we had over in Vanguard or the regiments from MW19 or Warzone 1. I did see some tweets suggesting that there were some issues with finding my group the bomb shelter not sure what happened here try searching for it again and messing with those filters to see if it does pop up but if you have any trouble let me know down below in the comments i'll try to help you guys as soon as i can now when it comes to the patch notes for season one reloaded something that i haven't had a chance to really talk about just yet there's been so much to talk about over the last couple of days in regards to dlc content we have a lot to get through in terms of multiplayer warzone and dmz so let's jump right into things here as you can see so this is the patch notes page and right at the start we have the global events some of the new additions modes maps and then we have quality of life changes so we have the xp token menu which did get added in i talked more about this in a previous video yesterday but it's an awesome addition to the game allowing you to actually equip in the pause menu and while in a match itself which is crazy they can also no longer be activated during double xp events that was a weird bug that was going on when we had some double xp events previously and also with that being said players who join a game in progress no longer get a loss if their team loses the match attachments now have a tuning icon on them in the preview indicating which ones can be tuned and which ones cannot finishing moves now count towards 30 kill in third person daily challenges over in spec ops we have an update to sticker book challenges operator bars no longer cut off part of the way through that was a weird one Acquiring a new blueprint will now display a pulsing dot next to the associated weapon in Gunsmith. You will no longer see a black screen on some platforms when trying to purchase COD points. Other issues there with some weapons and attachment unlocks. Added toggle versus hold for the ping wheel, which is cool. For social, though, they've merged the hub and friends tabs together, switched to smaller player card widgets for friends, added support for batch and bulk sending a friend request, fixed various bugs right there, transitioned to grid view and scrolling in friends list. Thank God we did a bit of a UI overhaul for that. And then for showcase, Cases. Camera positions on operators have been adjusted. We have adjustments there to filter and sort, uh, fix the player browser, fix an issue with calling cards, an issue where players weren't properly sorting by progression in the player browser, hides the empty attachments nodes on weapon inspection when there were no attachments slotted. Uh, we have channels as well. Got some changes there. Adjusted member list states. Uh, text message states. Players in member lists will now be divided by team and lobbies. Fix an issue where player lobbies were still able to be heard when connected to a custom channel. Or excuse me, lobby players. Set it backwards. Added this ability or added the ability to text chat with group members. Definitely awesome. And then right here, they added a new feature, which is groups. Find or create communities with the new social feature. Check out the most recent COD blog for more. We talked about that in a previous video. But for weapon balancing, generally speaking, they've adjusted the Akimbo P890, the X12 Basilisk, and the 50GS Desert Eagle. They've received damage reduction against armored opponents. Fixed an issue causing shotguns to inconsistently display the broken armor hit marker. Then we have some changes here for ARs, the MX9, M13B, the Castoff 74U, the Castoff 545, lots of increases, and some other changes there, as you can see. But for the SMGs, we have the Vel 47. And then for pistols, the Basilisk Revolver. Got a nice change there, which I think people out there definitely wanted. And then we have uh, some adjustments there to the Desert Eagle. Reduce hip spread. Increase one hit headshot range. Increase damage range. So this got a bit of a buff, which is nuts. It was already overpowered as it was. Got some adjustments there to the shotguns. Can no longer kill fully armored players in one shot. I mean, that's a great fix because it's very unfair to one-tap somebody with full armor. It makes no sense. Uh, changes there to the Expedite 12 shotgun. Added guard category there for these. For melee, we got adjustments to the riot shield. Reduced movement speed. Reduced melee damage to three hit kills, which is really, really concerning for camel grinders out there. We're going to have a hard time with getting some camels unlocked now. Shield movement animation improvement. Longer switch time pulling out throwing knife when the riot shield is equipped. Now for launchers, we have the joker right here. Missiles no longer land out of bounds when targeting a wall on the edge of a map. Improve the thermal readability when aiming in. Other balance changes for vehicles quite a bit here, reducing collision damage, increasing health, fall damage, added custom turret rotation speed for the APC. Some other changes there, as you can see. I again have the patch notes linked down below in this video description if you want to read more in depth. It would take me a good 20 plus minutes to read everything specifically line for line. So we're just kind of paraphrasing and going through things as quick as possible. Players no longer get the out of bounds countdown when taking a vehicle from the enemy's restricted area on ground war. That's a big change. Added dynamic crosshair for the tank. So that's pretty cool. Ally visibility. 
Ally name places appear when an enemy is in the direct path of an ally to prevent mistaking enemies for allies. In tier 1, this change only applies to allies behind Geo. Allies with line of sight will always show name place to prevent friendly fire. So glad to see some improvements there with visibility that was a big concern during the beta and definitely a little bit during the launch window of the game as well but then for kill streaks players that have been killed in one life modes with revive capabilities such as knockout will no longer be marked as an active player when using the cruise missile chopper gunner or even the gunship care package fix an issue that allow players to spawn on a position where a care package is occupying resulting in an immediate death also a change to the mgb fix an issue that prevented players from calling out the mgb while swimming underwater that was annoying a couple of fixes to the Juggernaut. Should now correctly switch between their minigun and pistol when entering and exiting the water. Explosive weapons that stick to the Juggernaut, such as Semtex, Drill Charge, should now inflict more damage against it. That's a big one to take them down. Fix an issue where Juggernaut sometimes die to a single throwing knife in Tier 1. That's definitely BS. Glad they fixed that one. SAE fix an issue that prevented explosions from doing damage to neutral and enemy-occupied vehicles. Sentry Gun fixed an exploit that allowed Sentry Guns to be placed under the map in certain locations. Field upgrades. They fixed the portable radar. They can now stick to vehicles. For equipment, though, radiation blocker now prevents the use of this equipment when performing a number of different actions such as slotting in armor this should resolve a few issues where players no longer had their weapon or could not interact with items thermite they also fixed that no longer persist on a player that was stuck then died and respawned again that's pretty funny also a bunch of attachment tuning features here most beneficial tuning value magnitudes have been increased and they decrease the harmful tuning value magnitudes also changes to some optics we got thermal we have the prime 90 the angel 40 the hollow term as well as the thermo optic x9 also with weapon customization ui and ux default weapon attachment graph contribution no longer shows up as modification on stat graphs prevents seeing red or green on a default weapon stat graph fixes miscalculation shown in attachment tuning spider graph also an issue was prominent in sniper weapon optics category there as you could see but then in terms of operators as we talked about in a previous video they have nerfed the la thieves skin as they wrote here Added, uh, added accent colors, excuse me, to goggles and straps for enhanced visibility because originally this was a replacement for Rose, which is not anything we want to see in Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer or Warzone 2, so luckily they've improved that. For those that bought the skin in its original state and are mad about this change, as a reminder, it's put in the disclaimer under every microtransaction that Activision has the right to modify, change, or remove content from the shop at any moment in time, even if you've bought it. I don't think that was a disclaimer with Warzone 1's cosmetics, or excuse me, Warzone 1's cosmetics, but that is one here for warzone 2 new york subliners adjusted accent colors for nysl branding and then some other various bug fixes here fix an issue causing the game client to freeze upon unlocking the sector a15 in the battle pass uh, an issue causing reward previews to not appear as intended while navigating the battle pass. Fix audio cutting off when skidding. And fix attacking with fists causing players to lean out of vehicles. Adjust 3D models for operators and blueprints when previewing store bundles. That was a big one because previously some of the bundles would just showcase like a cutout JPEG of the operator. Instead of just having the operator popping up in a 3D fashion like we're accustomed to from every other bundle over the past couple years. So luckily they got that in check. Audio fix Dolby Atmos data issue where some sounds are not panning to the ceiling speakers and some other audio occlusion remains disabled in multiplayer. PC specific fix an issue related to the menus causing FPS drops in the firing range. Fix an issue that would make controllers vibrate even when the game wasn't the main window. And then fix night vision goggle prompt in the HUD, which is awesome. And then for multiplayer here, for Tier 1, a.k.a. Hardcore, which I know people out there aren't a big fan of right now, maybe a classic Hardcore mode will be added in the future, but knowing the way Infinity Ward is with them sticking to their guns, they're probably not going to change Tier 1 that much over the course of this year. They fixed an issue where the minimap was not always appearing or staying up when calling in a UAV or an advanced UAV, which is definitely a big problem. Friendly AI will no longer set off suppression mines, excuse me, suppression mines from the same team here for the awesome Ground War LTM, or not an LTM, but you know what I mean. Map updates. So for battle maps, fixed player collision issues in Santa Senia, fixes for various tactical camera exploits, fixed bullet collision exploits, Core 6v6. They fix various tactical camera exploits, also issues with bullet penetration, few exploits where players can get into unintended areas. Uh, relating to lethal and tactical collision on the environment. That's another big one. Shoe House can once again be played in private matches. That was a weird one because that came out quite some time ago with the start of Season 1, about a month ago, and it just for some reason wasn't available in private games, which is weird. For Special Ops, though, High Ground. Game will end if player leaves before picking a role. That's funny. Fix to prevent player from leaving Chopper Gunner Physics. And Defender Mount Zaya. Fix for players accessing hidden intel without a key. And a rare loss of functionality issue that could occur if a player joined on an already matchmaking player. 
For low profile, fix for run over 10 enemies daily challenge, not tracking properly. Added a pop-up hint for players attempting to reuse an armor box they've already used. Fix issue that caused ammo discrepancies when firing and reloading. Also, last stand zoom camera and a drop ammo issue. But that's specifically into the CDL Mosh Pit developed by Treyarch. It's not live as of December 1st. Play competitive 4v4. And then those are the game modes and apps you can play in that actual playlist, which is awesome. Ranked play is scheduled for some point in 2023. I mean, they could even surprise us by dropping it before Season 2. So maybe mid-January. We'll have to wait and see when Treyarch has that done. But then they got information here about Warzone 2, the game modes you could play. We already knew that. And then for the map itself of Almazra, general improvements to lighting and shadows across several major points of interest. And then, of course, Building 21 over in DMZ. At the time of recording this, the map itself is not live over in DMZ. What's ironic here is that it's not really an area, so to speak. It's a map you actually select at the menu. So you can pick between Almazra and Building 21, uh, according to hackers who posted early gameplay of the map. That's the way it works. I was under the impression that it was an expansion to DMZ we have right now with Almazra or maybe having to go somewhere towards the edge of the map and then access the building through there. But no, it's completely separate from Almazra altogether, which is hilarious. Got some teasers there. Also, gameplay adjustments. So we have Battle Royale, Stronghold, and Blackside AI. Increased number of active strongholds to five, up from three. They've also improve the AI combatants, so damage per bullet reduced by 26%, and number of units per site reduced by 50% as well. Further reductions based on squad sizes, AI combatant reinforcements, they double time between waves, number of units per wave reduced by 30%, so that's huge that they actually nerfed how those work. So obviously you'll see strongholds in both Warzone Battle Royale and DMZ, so I'm happy to see that improvement. But then for black sites here, this is where things get crazy. AI combatants have now additional armor, so it's going to be a lot harder. They've been buffed. Rewards and upgraded... I'm sorry, rewards an upgraded version of the Stronghold UAV, which will sweep twice as far and about 30% faster. So that's a pretty good improvement. And then for DMZ adjustments specifically, for cash values, general change to valuable items, changes to cash rewards for contracts. We have improvements to container spawn rates, which is awesome. That was definitely something that people out there were talking more about over on Twitter. These increases are awesome. Everybody wanted more self-revives, gas masks, field upgrades over in the first aid kits. And obviously, plate carriers, backpacks, everything else, weapon stashes. But they've decreased electronic components, uh, toothpaste, and number of items found in the black market. They've improved the plea for help feature. Eliminated players not able to request help from enemy players, resulting in them joining the enemy squad as a new member. That's a big one. I'll talk more about DMZ in a separate video, talking all about the major changes, Building 21. I'll work on that video over the course of this weekend, of course. But XP tokens can now be activated in the main lobby menu, which is great. Random perks successfully extracting multiple times in a row will provide players with random perks for their next info. I'm not sure if you lose those perks if you die out. I'm assuming you probably do, but... I'll be covering DMZ perks, of course, in that separate video that I was talking about. But medium and large backpacks, these now allow for a third weapon slot. Uh, faction missions, main improvements to descriptions for better clarity. We still need some serious changes to some of the missions that are clearly bugged when it comes to the progression. So I'm sure we'll see some updates to that probably in Season 2. Also, equipment. They've improved the bomb drone. They've improved the radiation blocker. Now prevents the use of equipment when performing a number of different actions, such as slotting in armor plates. And we then have perks. Perk packages, uh, default loadouts have now been updated, which is awesome. So that improves both Warzone 2 and DMZ. Quality of life, out of bound fix, uh, fixed with ammunition. Uh, we then have ground loot with some various improvements there. And even buy stations, items purchased via buy stations will now spawn spread out rather than stacked for easier interaction, which is perfect. Gulag elimination alert, a sound will play to notify the squad when a member in the Gulag has eliminated an opponent or been eliminated. So also a big one. And then for UI and UX with a combat record, as we already talked about, the Warzone 2 combat record has been delayed indefinitely. No release at this point in time, not sure what's happening with that or if any of your stats right now going forward even track. When they do add in the feature, not sure what's going on with that. But then to end off this blog post here or this patch note list, we have various, various bug fixes for preventing player nameplates from appearing. Uh, elements in Almazra. What else we have? Bomb drone audio. Lots of stuff here, as you can see. Uh, an issue causing players and AI combatants to not render properly during a match. That's a funny one. Pinging a loadout drop. That's huge. People need to be able to do that. Daily challenges overlapping in the squad window. Causing bounty contract UI to remain on screen after a player was assimilated. That's a funny one. Uh, issues allowing players to operate most vehicles while leaning out of a window. A lot of texture related things. Equipment. An issue that caused the game client to, to freeze or remove players from the match when interacting with buy station. That's crazy. Prevent the eliminations from appearing in the kill feed. 
An issue prompted players to install single player campaign content while attempting to queue for modes in the Battle Royale playlist. There is so much they got fixed here. So definitely a worthwhile update that was definitely needed before devs go on holiday break for Christmas. And when they come back from holiday break in what, early January, more bug fixes, more patch notes will all of course be released before launch season two, which is February 1st. So keep that in mind. I know we're talking a bit fast as well, going through this as fast as possible. So this video isn't that long. Appreciate you guys sticking around here. Lots of issues. Oh my Lord. At least hundreds of things here in this patch note list. <laughs> With loadout drops, contract phones. I mean, there is so much. All in regards to Warzone as well. The Jailer and the Gulag, Ping Strongholds, XP summaries, supply boxes. And there's a whole list for DMZ, which is a little bit shorter. I mean, Battle Royale needed a lot of work. So luckily they went through and went ham here with this update 1.12. But then DMZ, an issue that caused the mass disconnect message to appear in the kill feed. Uh, blueprints not being usable in DMZ. That's a big one. Fix an issue where the use prompts did not work correctly for some faction missions. Uh, issue with caches, with, uh, the secure nuclear material contract. Reinforcement helicopters not tracking. And then kill streak elimination missions uh, not tracking properly. And there's quite a few good improvements here. But as they wrote here at the bottom, more communication will, in course, or will of course, excuse me, be released over the course of the next couple of weeks as they do return back from holiday break. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on update 1.12 for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2? That was quite a bit to get through. I went through it as fast as I possibly can without making this video too long. How are you feeling about all the major changes this game got? And they're probably changes that you either didn't know about or changes you weren't even ready to hear about. There is so much that we went through here. Of course, check timestamps down below in this video's description. Skip around to certain game modes that you want to hear about the most. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.